At first it may seem strange that Nahum, the prophet sent to herald the doom of a city, should have a name meaning consolation. Is there any comfort in knowing that God is a God of wrath? Because this certainly is a book about wrath. In chapter 1, we're introduced to the character of the judge. Notice three of his attributes. Number one, the Lord is a jealous God and a revenger, verse 2. He takes injustice seriously and will in the end set things right. But notice, number two, the Lord is slow to anger and of great power, verse 3. God has the power to execute judgment immediately, but not the heart to do it. He's long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish. Three, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, verse 7. Yes, he knows how to save out of judgment, too. Ask Rahab or Lot or any poor sinner that has found refuge in Christ. We ought to thank God for his wrath. It was the wrath that fell at Calvary that makes it possible for God to be a stronghold in the day of trouble. In chapter 2, we have described the severity of the judgment. Nineveh, proud capital of the Assyrian Empire, had repented at the preaching of Jonah more than a hundred years before, but the city had now hardened itself against him, and her doom was sealed. The destruction came about 50 years after the prophecy, and the description here is so exact that unbelievers have tried to prove it was written after the fact. In chapter 3, God presents vindication for his judgment. God in the end not only will be just, he will be seen to be just. The most frightening words in the book are repeated in chapters 2 and 3. Behold, I am against you, says the Lord of hosts. What is the threefold charge against the city? Like the charges in Revelation 18, they are political cruelty, religious fraud, and economic rape. But it wasn't that they didn't hear the good news, was it? Chapter 1, verse 15, quoted in Romans 10, 15, proves that they had heard. In our time as well, the heathen appear to sin with impunity. But Nahum reminds us that the greatest city in the world at that time, with its walls a hundred feet high, defended by 1,200 towers, with a circumference of 60 miles, would be leveled with a stroke from God. It happened in 612 BC. In fact, the destruction was so complete that Xenophon scarcely recognized it, and Alexander marched by not knowing that a world empire was buried under his feet. So when people seem to get away with their unjust deeds, remember what they need is to hear the good news. But if they continue to fight against God, the Lord will set everything right, and affliction shall not rise up the second time. And that's our scripture snapshot of the prophecy of Nahum.